Live on Channel 5. This is the 10 o'clock news with Ron Majors and Carol Marine, John Coleman with weather, and Mark G. and Greco with sports. The Channel 5 News at 10. Good evening. Both sides vowed they would not bring it up, but tonight it has been brought up, and race is emerging as an issue in the Democratic primary race in Chicago. As Channel 5's Phil Walters tells us, Mayor Washington and Jane Byrne are blaming each other. Phil? Carol, there is definitely a new tone in the campaign tonight. Harold Washington demanding that Jane Byrne pull her latest TV ads off the air because they are divisive and polarizing. Those new ads accuse Washington of being remarks last Saturday at Operation Push by Judge Eugene Pincham. Any man south of Madison Street who cast a vote in the February 24th election who doesn't cast a vote for Al Washington ought to be hung. Today, the Campaign Practices Committee, called Conduct, said that kind of talk should not be part of any campaign. As we're talking about the... Uh, Chris, who was released this evening on a $100,000 bond, was not at his Cicero Avenue home, just a few blocks from the church. His mother, who answered the door, had no comment. Isabel Duran, Channel 5 News. Police say they found no evidence of physical abuse in the alleged fondling incidents. Convicted killer Alton Coleman tonight is the only person in the country to be under four death sentences. In a Waukegan courtroom today, he was sentenced to death plus 15 years in prison for the murder of a nine-year-old girl named Vernita Wheat. After the sentencing, Coleman said to a judge, quote, you are a cold man. A north side individual who pulled a toy gun on a cop is dead, shot twice by the surprised undercover officer. Uptown's Truman College was the scene of today's noontime shooting. Police say 33-year-old Miguel Beltran tried to sell cocaine to a plainclothes officer. The two men went to a first floor washroom where the suspect allegedly demanded cash and pulled a gun that later proved to be fake. Beltran was pronounced dead at Weiss Memorial Hospital. Police say he lived in the Uptown area. There's plenty of reason for happiness elsewhere tonight. A happy birthday for two people in the news. One of them, Gerald Sive, the journalist who was held as a spy in Iran. He turned 31 today and said freedom was his best present ever. He was greeted at the airport in Zurich by his wife. He'd been held captive four days in Iran, and he's insisting he has no idea why he was held there. I'm still not sure why I was detained or how I was released. All I know is that any suggestion I was involved in any kind of espionage is completely false. He was invited to Iran, but last Saturday he was suddenly accused of being a spy for Israel. As President Reagan put it, it was the 37th anniversary of his 39th birthday. Tonight he is 76 years old. The White House staff gave the president a surprise party complete with a Marine band. Filling out the cake, the president was called into the party under the ruse that he was heading to a briefing on a new government program. Much more to come tonight on the Channel 5 News. Federal workers are told to butt out while in the office. Dr. Barry Kaufman will have that story. Plus, we'll tell you about a new danger facing American military people overseas. And we'll take a look at a new telephone that's triggering protest on the West Coast. The Channel 5 News is being sponsored in part by Nissan. The nation's biggest employer separated many of its smokers from its non-smokers today. Dr. Barry Kaufman here to tell us it's a move designed to save thousands of lives and millions of medical dollars. Carol and Ron, the federal government's new smoking regulation not only may save lives, money, and frayed tempers, it goes along with the mood of the times. A recent Gallup survey revealed the vast majority of smokers and non-smokers favor smoking restrictions in the workplace. On the West Coast tonight, there is growing concern about a new telephone in the market. It's shaped like a 45 caliber automatic pistol, and that's got gun control groups angry. They say a child could come to believe this kind of pistol is safe, with tragic results. Despite those concerns, more than 5,000 orders for the gun phone have come in just in the past month alone. Coming up, John Coleman to take a look at our spring. Well, it's going to come to an end. Tomorrow will be a beautiful day, but wait a minute. It'll be the last of the great days. Stay with us. And Norman Mark will be along to review a legal comedy. Well, things just change in the weather business. And you look at a map and it's different at night. It's been great while it lasted, but yes, Carol, the maps tonight say, watch out, cold wave hits Sunday, so enjoy Saturday while you can. 
Tomorrow morning will be mild, low around 38, high 50 on Saturday. So one more beautiful day in the string of gorgeous days. Mostly sunny, west winds 8 to 12. But tomorrow night, things begin to change. So, tomorrow, outside. Sunday, you may be huddling up in front of the fireplace. 38 degrees at 10 o'clock, humidity 79%, west breeze at 7. Temperatures range from 34 at Crystal Lake to 41 in the heart of the city at 10 o'clock at night. The satellite view shows the rainstorm that's missed us going off for the south, the only snow in the nation tonight. A few flakes falling at places like Saranac Lake, New York, and Watertown, New York. But do you see this band of clouds in Manitoba and Alberta? That is an Arctic cold front. Now, it's been there for 24 hours, and our satellite views projected by the computer for tomorrow morning show it beginning to come down to the Lake Superior area tomorrow, and by Sunday morning, pushing down through Wisconsin and Michigan. Bad news is, it's going to get us. As a young lawyer, Stormy Weathers, Judd Nelson tricks his way into defending his first court case. And here, the movie is hilarious. Later, he must defend a real murderer, and despite some fine, slimy acting by John Hurt, things get rather murky. Have you any idea what it takes to kill a human being, Mr. Weathers? In the course of this movie, we're expected to believe that Judd Nelson graduated from college and law school and began practicing law, apparently without ever confronting the idea that he might need to defend someone who is guilty someday. And that's expecting a lot of us. Norman's Mark, two stars. From the hip should have stuck to the comedy. I'm Norman Mark for Channel 5 News. From the hip, by the way, is rated PG. Michael Jordan in Seattle for the All-Star Game. He is dazzling them as he does here. Warner Saunders in Seattle with that and more coming up in a minute. We give it to you straight. We probe. Well, I'll tell you what, Carol. Before I tell anyone else, I'll tell you. Check. If you try to back me in the corner, I won't be back in the corner. Probe. That's all I know it was not my mistake. Push. We're not going to get into calling people names. We don't just follow a story. We surround it. Analyze it. What will the issues of Decision 87 be? The question is, where do we stand on the mayoral merry-go-round tonight? Channel 5 News with Ron Majors and Carol Moreno. It is kind of nice that the Bulls have the premier representative at the All-Star game. That's right, the new Dr. J, huh? Yeah. It's going to be a show. It is NBA All-Star weekend in the Pacific Northwest. Tomorrow it's the slam dunk. Sunday, the All-Star Classic itself. And of course, we're all looking for Michael Jordan's star to shine a little bit brighter than the rest. Warner Saunders is with Michael in Seattle. Downs, Los Angeles. Back to the NBA slam dunk tomorrow. Now, today... Dominique Wilkins, Michael's number one competitor, bowed out, complaining of sore ankles. There is a chance, though, he could change his mind tomorrow. If he does sit out, watch out for his replacement, Portland's Jerome Kersey. Nobody knows who this guy is, but take a look. I mean, he looks like Michael, doesn't he? Jerome Kersey of the Trailblazers could be the late entry dark horse. Woo. But my money's still on Mike. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Finally tonight, another cutting edge issue from California. The new political debate is over toilet equity. California lawmakers have noticed that at large public gatherings, the line for the women's room is always longer than the line for the men's room. The conclusion is women's room need to be bigger with more toilets. And a law requiring that in all new buildings in California is now being debated by the legislature. Yeah. Guess the lid's off this one. And I'm That's relieved. That's the news this Friday. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Good night. An autobiography of black politics, Saturday at 6.